In today's Legal on Four, living together without being married. When people are in love and happy, many legal issues seem unimportant. But even if the couples live happily ever after, legal planning may be necessary to protect each other should unforeseen circumstances arise. Our legal contributor, Craig Wisdom, joins us now. And, you know, it's true. When you're happily in love, you just don't think about, well, who's who belongs to what or mm -hmm. what belongs to what. But you never know what's going to happen, including the death of that person, or they become incapacitated. Exactly. We might talk next next time about the long-term relationships and some of the things you need to do to protect. Okay. But yeah, sometimes it's not just, even if you trust each other completely, if something happens to one of us and one of you has kids and the other one doesn't, you want things set up clearly in writing so you avoid arguments. Okay, so you say there are specific types of agreements. There is. I mean... It's pretty rare for a couple living together to actually do a cohabitation agreement where they, you know, kind of set out who's going to pay for what and what's going to happen if they break up and, and who's living there. But it's not a bad idea. And if you kind of make it sound even simple, something like an expense agreement, and you realize for the most part you need to think and talk about these things no matter what, just for planning purposes, you know. Who's going to pay for what? Who's going to pay the expenses? If I pay for things on my credit card and run up debt, is the other person going to be responsible if we break up? You know, who's going to pay the rent? Who's going to pay the utilities? So if you think about it, these things have to be answered very quickly anyway. Mm -hmm. So sometimes a very simple agreement spelling all this out can cover those things and avoid some big disagreements in the future. Yeah, and obviously the rent or mortgage, whatever, is an important thing to determine who's going to pay for what. What else should be spelled out? Well, you know, in the most, you know, the classic palimony case going back a couple decades, there was always the case in a long-term relationship of some sort of argument about you promised me this, mm -hmm. you know, and that could be, gee, if, if I stayed home and took care of the home and you went out and worked, kind of like what traditional marriage and community property, but for people that aren't married, you promised me that you'd take care of me and what you earned would be ours. And those are the type things that, that people can argue about after they break up and they want to get back at the other person and they're feeling like they lost out of the, lost out in the economic gain. So that's one of the things that in a very cautious document can spell out and say, look, we're you know not promising anything. But unless it's written down, you promised me doesn't hold up in court. It normally doesn't, but people will make that argument, and if it's in writing that there was no such promise, that's your best protection. And of course, then there's furniture and stuff, artwork or stuff that you purchased together. Exactly. You know, who bought that? You know, sometimes if people are living together a few years, do you remember who actually paid for the TV if it's something worth fighting about when the time comes? And if, you know, you, again, if you both went in on it, who gets it? Mm -hmm. Some of these details are small enough, they're probably never going to be resolved and they're never going to be put down in writing. But at the very least, couples making this shift should think about it. Think about, is, are there things worth covering? What, what are the implications going to be? So at least they've considered whether an agreement to some sort of some sort makes sense. Okay, next time we're going to talk about relationships that are more long-term, like almost common law. Exactly. You know what happened? Because the thing to remember about those is you miss out on a lot of the automatic protections and benefits and relationships you get when you're married. And so you have to be extra careful to protect each other. Okay. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Craig.